what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here since i'm talking about halloween ends in this video here today so recently i got done watching the halloween kills extended cut i'm gonna re-watch it again just to uh have a better experience since i had some distractions around me while i was watching it but <laughs> jumping into the topic of the halloween ends discussion so in the commentary i guess because i didn't listen to it with commentary but david gordon green apparently made some comments about the radio tower from halloween kills playing a being a something of significance that plays into halloween ends so i know in the past there has been discussions about this i've i've seen the talks of brain waves and how it could have or just how frequencies could have affect the brain i've seen that talked about over the years of my lifetime and with the whole radio tower and the fact that the movie's titled cave dweller there's a chance that maybe he is michael myers that being has been living near a cave by the radio tower for the past four years during that time jump between halloween kills and halloween ends and that's where the radio tower come into significance or could this radio tower actually be what they use to unlock some of the answers as to what is key Keeping Michael Myers going what's making him tick what is the source of his evil because if they do that that would also be a, a way to kind of slightly turn a piece of dialogue from the original film that I don't know the exact words but I know Dr. Loomis was the one who said it they could turn a, a, a bit of that dialogue into slight foreshadowing with the, whatever they come up with if this again is used as a source of what keeps Michael Myers going and maybe there's something that happens along the way where we find out that Michael Myers is in fact being affected by something going on at the at the uh, radio tower that we see in Halloween Kills, which we actually see that a couple times. I know we see it during the flashback, the 1978 flashback, which again was brilliantly done in terms of how they recreated that Myers house. We see it there. I think we also see it again with him and Cameron during an interaction between or not with Michael and Cameron at one point with Cameron. Uh, and a few other times in Halloween Kills. So the radio tower playing a significant role or having some significance for Halloween ends that could also be where Michael dies in the sense of maybe something happens where Michael ends up going on top of the tower and he falls to his death and we just never see or hear from him again. Maybe the way they do it though is just something that's very up in the air. Even though you see this, this man who's still from what they're telling telling us is not supernatural even though you see him fall from that high up depending on how high up he is maybe there's some comments made afterwards and like some slight voiceovers from other characters talking about how you know evil is never really dead and then you the audience are left to wonder did he die from that fall and you know of course you never get your answer because they're not going to revisit this timeline ever again uh this could be where Laurie Strode dies. This could be where Allison Nelson dies. The radio tower could just be a moment in the film where Michael decides, you know, I'm going to disconnect all types of communication possible between Haddonfield and whatever's nearby. You won't be able to reach out for help to anyone. There's a whole lot of stuff that this radio tower could be playing significance with. If they do decide to use it as a source of his origins in a way, then what I think they should do is not explain too much. Leave the I, I would want them to take a more elevated route i would say kind of like with the shining with hereditary and with a lot of other modern more modern horror movies like mostly from a24 where you have all of the ingredients and you the audience can put together any coherent narrative of your own that makes sense based off and backed up by the clues that are provided along the way throughout the film you don't have to have a one a one answer to what makes michael myers tick you could have all the same ingredients though and it could all be backed up by those ingredients and all the clues that are left along the way in halloween ends they don't have to come right out and tell us you know this is how the radio tower is connected to michael myers this is what's happening to him this is how it's affecting him this is why he's been like this since the age of six this is what prompted him to kill his sister they don't have to go that in depth they could just leave it all up to you the audience to interpret and it could just be another way to just keep the conversation going, just to not have anything ceasing as far as like conversations about what is keeping Michael Myers going. What is what is keeping him going? What is making him tick? Why is he the way that he is? Because even when you give out those answers, like with Halloween six, the curse of Michael Myers, you're kind of putting to bed all the talks of, well, what makes him tick? With Halloween 6, I feel like the more you were discussing out coming out of that, though, was that did that really make any sense? <laughs> did they did they explain that well versus with Halloween ends? If you just leave it all up to interpretation, but everything that you give us to go off of 
puts us in a scenario where we can have many different uh, end results for people to consider as to what it is about the radio tower that contributes to what keeps Michael Myers going if they take that route that you, you leave just a, a, another room of discussion open. You don't you don't close the door on discussions about Michael Myers origins completely, but you have provided enough for us to understand that that plays a key factor. Some of the events that unfold throughout the film could also tell us, yes, this is what is happening, but you don't outwardly come out and have a character give you a overflow of exposition dumping, I would say, or just over explaining it to the point where now, well, it's not up to interpretation. This is what it is. And, you know, you might have a section of people who don't like it. Versus some people who might like like me who might point out how that doesn't really make sense because you probably should have done it like this, but still backing it up with the same clues, which is why it's probably best if you just leave it up to interpretation, which could lead us to a plethora of different logical explanations that you didn't outwardly explicitly say, but it could be backed up by the clues that you give us along the way in Halloween ends the radio tower and what significance it could be. Again, it could just be a location in the film where something big happens. Maybe Allison has, cause I've talked about how Allison should be the final person standing when it comes to the legacy of the Strode women. It should not be Lori Strode. It doesn't mean Lori Strode has to die or anything like that, but I feel like Allison should be the one doing the killing blow or putting into action whatever whatever takes Myers out of commission whether that be us actually seeing him die or us just seeing him presumably die but then it's left up for you to doubt if he actually died or not I think that should still come from Allison she should be the one taking back the narrative taking back uh whatever trauma she has been enduring over the past four years PTSD and getting revenge getting justice for not only her mother her father but also her grandmother who again she doesn't have to live or die for this to happen I just think the person who should have the final say against Michael Myers should be the youngest out of this batch which is Allison who can go on into her adulthood into the rest of her life confidence knowing that her grandmother was not crazy her grandmother prepared her and she protected her grandmother or she did something that just lived up to her legacy if Lori dies but let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below what do you think the radio tower significant is if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification and never miss a video in the description i have links to my social media accounts my facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course to let me know if there's any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video